everyone, welcome back to my channel, Mas Masa. Mi nombre es Silvia y bienvenidos, if this is your first time here, welcome to my new subscribers and for my old subscribers, what's up? In this channel, I do a lot of Latina living, so you're gonna see like cooking videos, some fashion videos, and whatever comes to my brain. As you all know, I recently took a trip to Cuba. And in this video, I am going to share with you the top 10 things you need to know before traveling to Cuba. These are the things you want to know before embarking on this awesome, amazing adventure. I have made a traveling tip video for you guys before and I'll leave the link down below. But this video is specifically for your trip to Cuba. There are many videos out there detailing a travel to Cuba, but things change all the time. So this is an updated video for 2019, what you need to know before heading out. Number one, credit cards don't work in Cuba. So you will need to take cash from wherever you're traveling from. Number two, phones don't work in Cuba. Not even unlocked iPhones. Usually when you go to other countries, you just buy a local SIM card and you just stick it in your phone. But in Cuba, you can't buy SIM cards. You can use VoIP calling where there is a Wi-Fi spot. Also, you can't just go into a store and buy whatever you want. You will have to show ID like a passport or a driver's license. Every item that you purchase must be registered, even in the market. Number three, internet spots are better, but not really reliable. You have to go to places called Sala de Navegación and purchase internet cards. It's usually around five cooks for five hours of Wi-Fi. Once you have your Wi-Fi card, you can look for locations around the area for signs that say Etexa. And usually those are located around parks and hotels. So you kind of have to scope them out and find them. And usually the hint is if you see a lot of people gathered around with their cell phones out. So that is your number one hint and clue to find these locations that are scattered throughout the town. Number four, renting a vehicle. I watched a lot of YouTube videos before going to Cuba and a lot of them say or recommend not to rent a car. I traveled with two of my kids and my mother-in-law so I thought it was important to have transportation at all times and available uh, wherever we were staying but it is pretty pricey. And warning, I wanna talk a little bit about the traffic signs. My recommendation is that you travel very cautiously, not specifically because of the road conditions, but because there are a lot of police everywhere. In some areas, you would find police in every single corner. Every single corner! At first, it was a little creepy, but we got used to it and we travel with a little more caution. Not the Californian stops. We didn't get pulled over at all. So here's a picture of the stop sign in Cuba. Does it look familiar? Doesn't it look like a yield sign? So be cautious, pay attention. Mucho ajo, mucho ajo. Ajo, mucho ajo. Another challenge with uh, renting your own car is that gas is sparse and you're gonna have to get up pretty early in the morning to make sure you get in line to get gas before it runs out. It does run out. There was one time, well, I think we went three days without being able to purchase gas for our car. Luckily, at that time, we were only doing local travel and uh, we weren't using much gas because everything was kind of close, so we weren't that worried. Number five, using an Airbnb is safe. Expedia doesn't work in Cuba, so we used justfly.com to book our flight. 
really flights because we had a connector flight. But Expedia does not book anything in Cuba. Does not. On a side note, there are some direct flights to Cuba from the United States and those only go out of Miami and New York using JetBlue, United and Southwest. No cruises are currently traveling out of the US due to the travel restrictions and economic sanctions. Number six, Apple Maps does work offline, so it is great to use to navigate through Cuba. This was super helpful when we were traveling out of Varadero back to Havana. We had also printed out maps before leaving the United States and that really helped a lot until we figured out that Apple Maps works great. Number seven, exchange money at the Havana airport. Many videos do not provide information on where the heck to exchange your money. And the answer is at the airport when you land. It's perfectly fine. And even when you leave, you can exchange your money back to whatever it is you had. The airport exchange is perfectly fine. Number eight, no medical insurance is needed. I know you're like, well, what if I get chorro or something? Well, take some Pepto. Many videos stated that medical insurance was mandatory. We're a little rebellious, so we didn't buy it. While it is a great precaution, si eres enfermizo, enfermiza, if you can't afford it, just remember that it's really not mandatory. All I did was said my prayers every night and called it a day. Number nine, visas can be bought online or at the airport. At this time, most people go out of Cancun and they have them there available. We purchased our visas online on easytouristcard.com. That was the most inexpensive visa we found. But for those who are procrastinators or just forgot, you can buy your visa at the airport in Cancun. You can buy them before getting on the plane. There are people standing around everywhere and they sell them for $30 a person, of course. So don't panic. Number 10, exchange euros, not Canadian or dollars. Currently, euros are the best currency to exchange to cooks, which is the Cuban peso. You can exchange US dollars, but because of the sanction that exists at this time, they charge you between 10 to 15% for each $100 exchange. So my recommendation to you is just going to your local bank and exchanging your money to euros before heading out. But do this weeks ahead of time because it will take some time for your local bank to have the money ready for you. And then exchange your euros to cooks once you arrive in Cuba. A little side note, we used an app called My Currency Converter. There's tons of apps you can download before heading out and that helped us understand the conversion rate. It's approximately one euro to one cook. So it was easy to remember how much we were spending because remember, there are no credit cards. And those are the top 10 things to know before heading out to Cuba. I have some little side tips for you included in this video and that is, I would say, engage with the locals. They are amazing, they are open, and if you're Mexicano, they are so loving on if you're Mexican, like I remember like they would always ask, hey, where are you from? And I'd be like, soy Mexicana. And they'd be like, Mexico lindo y querido, si muero lejos de ti. And I'd be like, ahua. That's it guys. Don't forget to share my channel and this video with all of your family and friends. Let me know down below if you're thinking about going to Cuba. If you have any questions in regards to my travel in Cuba, I would love to answer them for you. Because of all the restrictions, tourism in Cuba is low. So if you have even a thought about going, go guys. I will see you guys in my next one. Peace, Latina in the house.